to those questions. Mr. Ogamba. Mr. Ogamba, as you are well aware, many Kenyans have put in a lot of complaints relating to the competency-based curriculum, complaining about the lack of facilities, uh, training of the teachers or sufficient teachers. If you were confirmed, what would you change? What is your analysis of the situation? And how would you handle it if you were appointed to this position? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Deputy, for that question. I have listened to Kenyans on the issue of the CBC. The competency, it's a competency-based curriculum that came about in order to replace the 844 system that was there before. The issues that I have identified as a challenge in the act and as a challenge in the program are three in number. There is a problem of lack of teachers. There is also a problem of the engagement of the parents in that program. There's also the challenge of the infrastructure that is supposed to be available to ensure that the CBC is done properly. In my view, the CBC, the competency-based curriculum, is a good program that came to ensure that the children who are learning get the benefit from their talents. So therefore, what would be done is to ensure that the parents understand what it is required for them to be able to assist the children when they are undertaking this CBC. Naisola. Thank you, Chairman. To the nominee, I just want to understand from you what is your take on governments continuing good policies that exist? Um, and why I ask that question is that or cabinet secretary is continuing with the good policies that they find there. In the education sector, we have found and we have seen in the past, every time a cabinet secretary comes in there, they think by changing policies that even are working, is, is showing that they are working. So I want to understand wh what your take is on that, whether you will continue with the good policies that are working. And my second question is the whole issue of the new university funding model, whether you are aware of it, and what measures will you put in place to ensure that you communicate effectively, especially to the parents and guardians, on what the new university funding model is all about? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Naisula. The question of changing existing policies in an institution that are good is, I think, something that needs to be considered. I do not believe that as a CS, if you went to the institution and you found that there are policies that are working, you need to change them. What you need to change is what is not working. So because government is one and you operate on continuity, it's a perpetual succession, so to speak. So if you find that a particular policy is working well, you do not need to change it. What you need to do is change that which is not working. On your second question on effective communication, it is true that there is a challenge with effective communication because some of the policies are complicated. So when they are not unbundled sufficiently, for the public to understand them, it brings a bit of a challenge. I think what is uh, not in doubt is that the university funding that you refer to, without a doubt, is a good program. It's a good program because the initial funding that existed was a funding that was going to universities as a block. And in that sense, each and every student was getting it without relating what they are receiving to their needs. The new funding model is a model that is based on the need 
of the student and the costs of the program. So that if, for example, you are able to fund your education, then based on the fact that you are able to, you should not be financed by government. And in that sense, the little funds that are available go to meet the needs of those who are most vulnerable. So in a manner of speaking, if this unbundling was done properly, then the public would understand what it is. Because the new uh, funding model is a funding model based on the MTI, where parents are as assessed using an, uh, the means uh, uh, a testing instrument so that we can determine what level are you because there is a strata of five uh, uh, stages or five uh, uh, groups of students uh, that get this funding. So the people or the students who are most vulnerable get the highest amount. Those ones who are able to fund or to fund their service, to fund their education get the equivalent of what they are able to. For example, the most vulnerable students get 95% uh, um, funding, and the ones that are able to fund themselves, or are able to pay for themselves, pay uh, a total of about 60%. Majority leader? You'll skip. Yes. Jeanette? I want to ask the nominee that, you know, uh, Wakili, I hope you know what you're getting into. Because <laughs> this Ministry of Education is not a joke. This is uh, something very big all over the country. 